morning. So we are finally going to do another garden tour. It is the start of April. So the garden has fully shifted into autumn plantings. I removed everything out of the beds. It was a bit bare for a while, um, but I've replanted most of it. And so I wanted to show you guys what's going on. Here are some of my seedlings. I bought some self-sown. So in this first long bed here, um, I've cut it, covered it up with just some netting. My husband set up the frame for it. I'll just show you quickly what the frame is. It's just um, some PVC conduits, I think. And he actually 3D printed the brackets because um, it was a cheaper solution. The brackets like this in the shop are nearly like $10 each. So if you have access to a 3D printer, would highly recommend doing something like that. Um, but you can see I've still got one of my zinnias left. I don't know which one that was because it came from a mix, so I'm not sure, but I just left it in there as um, something happy while everything else is still small. And so the reason for this netting is uh, an exclusion method. That a lot of people use and which I'm also using and it keeps out the cabbage butterfly or cabbage moth which is something that comes out and likes to lay eggs on uh, brassica plants especially little brassica seedlings so in here I've got some little brassica seedlings um, and I don't want the cabbage butterfly to lay eggs on them because the eggs then hatch into little caterpillars that eat the leaves of brassicas and that will be really detrimental especially while they're little um, I want to give these seedlings the best chance of survival so we can actually get food from them so these first little ones here I think about these six are cauliflower and they're the variety snowball so they're sort of like a smaller um, cauliflower which I thought would be pretty neat to grow and I didn't have super great success with my seed starting this year, partly because I used seed starting mix and didn't realize that they don't have a lot of nutrients once the uh, seedlings pop up. And so they really struggled and took a long time to get um, big enough to be planted out. So I have um, some bought seedlings as well. So I have, it's just called broccolini, so I don't know what variety it is, um, but there's a couple in there. I think, I think there's about maybe three of those. So I think, so I think there's three broccolini plants um, because it looks like I have seven snowball cauliflowers and then that one over there is a calendula I just wanted to like add some color into the beds because sometimes when you're just growing green things I mean it's great it's good for food that's why I'm growing it but also like adding bits of color into the garden because that's just what I like I find it more enjoyable and then when you enjoy the garden you're out in it a lot more and so that helps and then these four here are um, a purple cauliflower so it's um, Sicily purple cauliflower which I thought would be really cool to grow and as you can see I bought these seedlings um, I didn't I hadn't started any and a lot of my cauliflowers didn't survive so um, I've got four of those plants there and then over here there are two kales that I started that have popped in um, I think they are dazzling blue, those ones. You can also see down here in the end, I haven't actually planted anything down that end, um, except for one calendula. And so all of these things that you'll see, uh, like that's a bean that has sprouted um, from beans that I had grown in the summer season. You can see there's all random beans left over. And this is actually a potato because this was my little potato patch area um, earlier in summer so while I'm not using this space I'm kind of just leaving it for funsies just to see if anything grows from it I will just pop this back down I'm just securing it with pegs at the moment until I get um, some better clamps and just clamp it onto the bed there the next big bed along, um, it's a mix. This is kind of more of my experimental 
bed because there's a lot of veggies I've never actually grown before. Um, so, and there's just random stuff potted through. There's actually over there that's a nasturtium that has reseeded. Uh, I believe that was the orchid cream and it does climb, but it needs help. So that's why I've popped in um, that little trellis little system there. This is a basil plant that went to seed. Um, I've just left it in there for because I haven't got around to cutting it down. And also it's just giving a little bit of shade while these radishes, um, while I'm waiting for the radishes to come up. So I just popped in some more radish seeds yesterday actually. And a little, um, little gem lettuce seedling that I popped in there. And then this next little main area here. This is also my tumbleweed um, little worm composter. So you just pop everything in there. It does it, it has a completely open bottom so that worms can get in there from the bottom and also had some holes in the sides. So it's super neat because I don't have uh, any other compost system at the moment. We did have a tumbler, um, but it just wasn't working for us and what we needed at this point in time. So I got that um, actually as a gift from my parents, which is awesome. And so that's what we use to be able to put some scraps in there. I also put in mulch or dry leaves or cardboard or whatever I've got left over, um, just so you get a good mix between um, like green, fresh vegetables and the dry materials. Uh, so this little area is mostly sweets, which I have never grown before. Um, and this is also a lettuce leaf basil, which I was trying to grow in summer and it never actually grew. And now of course there is one popping up. So I've just left it while it's actually got a bit of space and then I'll take it out and let the sweets grow. So I have thinned some of them um, while the rest of them are growing. I have noticed that, I have noticed that I've been starting to get aphids uh, underneath the underneath the leaves but I have there's a patch there uh, I have also seen some I usually just squish them when I see them it's pretty yuck but I get rid of them I've seen some lady beetles in here which is pretty neat so at the moment I'm just squashing the aphids as I see them and not doing anything else uh, you might remember that I had a dill plant here it, it got completely covered in aphids and I actually just left it and we had a couple lady beetles come in and it was really awesome because they actually bred more lady beetles and then the whole plant was covered in like the larvae of lady beetles and they completely took out the whole aphid population so that was super awesome to see that. I also popped in a little gem lettuce here um, just on the side of the swedes there's just a bunch of them all growing there. They're sort of at all different stages. And then this little bit, I didn't have super great germination of radishes. So it's all radishes in here, a couple of different varieties. So I've just re it again with some different kinds of radishes. Uh, it could be just that the seed was old, possibly. I'm not really sure. Um, so I'm just seeing how they go. I think these two are French breakfast. You can see the, the pinky red there and this one is kind of a white under there and I did plant icicle radish there so I'm thinking that's what that is. And down here I am growing some Brussels sprouts which I've also never grown before. So there's just four plants actually because I think they get actually pretty big and the Brussels sprouts grow um, sort of in the nooks of where the leaves come out of the plant. So there's one there one there, another one over there, and another one over there. And just yesterday as well, I just sewed in two rows of radishes because I think the Brussels sprouts will take a while to get established and generally radishes grow faster. So it could be kind of neat to just get an extra bit of harvest while I'm waiting for the Brussels sprouts to get established. And I also transplanted uh, one of my purple kohlrabis into that spot because I have a couple extras down there. So we'll see how we go. I watered it in, but it's still looking a little bit sad. It might do all right. Um, and over here, there are some more purple kohlrabi. Uh, those grew from seed that I sowed straight into the garden. Um, but I bought these green kohlrabi seedlings because as I said, a lot of my seedlings didn't pull through. So there's just four kohlrabis there. 
Um, I have zinnia seeds, uh, little seedlings popping up everywhere. I'm just been pulling them out because I don't want them to grow at the moment. It's going to start getting cold and I want um, these kohlrabis to get as established as possible before it gets too cold. Um, and in this end, look, that's all zinnia seedlings. I did have two big zinnia plants here, so I don't know what variety they are. But look at that, that must have been like a whole flower head of zinnia. <laughs> See, things like this I can put into that compost bin and it will just break down for the worms, so I might do that. Mulch is like, has been super helpful, a big friend of mine um, and of yours when you're planting because it took forever for these to germinate here and those to germinate over there. I think because it was, we had a quite hot start to autumn and it just took forever for the seeds to germinate. I think because it just got so dry and so the top of the soil was always dry and I probably should have made um, better rows and used mulch in between those rows because you can see this is just a big massive square and it dried out really easily especially just in that top layer which is what you need to keep moist because um, that's where your seeds are and you need seeds to be moist to germinate so I think next time I'm going to have a different method and maybe do rows sort of more like this radish and even bring the mulch in a bit closer just so it can get moisture from um, like under here it will be see it's more damp there than it is over here so it's just the seeds do a lot better that way when you they're able to actually retain the moisture in the soil down the end here I've just popped in a calendula I did want to put a poppy here because I thought it would be super cute but I had a lot of issue with my poppy germination and I couldn't actually find any starts in um, the shops so I decided that I want something colorful in there so I've put a calendula in for now this is perpetual spinach which I actually have had in here since last winter so it's perpetual keeps growing because um, we don't really get a freeze here in Toowoomba it very very rarely goes um, below zero celsius um, and so I cut this back at the at the soil level but so that meant the roots were still in the ground and it just keeps growing back so I think if I ever want to get rid of it I'm gonna have to probably pull it out which I don't like pulling the roots out because I like them to break down the soil but if I ever want to plant anything in here I think that's just what I'm gonna have to do otherwise the other plants are always gonna have to compete with this spinach but it's actually really handy having this in here because it'll grow really well through the colder months um, because it was going to seed in summer and then I'll be able to come out here and harvest it for everything that I want with spinach over my pots um, it gets pretty hot in this little corner because the heat sort of it stays hotter here than other parts of the garden because it's just the sun and heat reflects off the bricks and we also have a big white fence there so um, it stays fairly warm in this corner than what it would um, in the rest of my yard where it's bigger spaces and it gets more breeze so I think the radishes have struggled a bit in here even though I added a little bit of mushroom compost to each of my pots they still kind of struggled these are the watermelon radish which is one of my favorites but I'm not sure how they're going to go because they've just really been pretty slow growing so we'll see these are some more um, sh red shallots which when I harvested um, the ones that I had growing uh, in a pot previously I there was a couple small ones and so I replanted them but I don't know if maybe I just did it at the wrong time because they are not bulbing up they kind of just have a really thick stalk kind of like leeks so I'm not actually sure what to do with them I guess I could probably still use them as kind of like an onion and just chop them down so I don't know we'll see this one here is supposed to be amazing grey poppy. You can see I used to have, um, that's a tomato seedling. I used to have tomatoes growing in here. Um, I had sown all of my amazing grey poppy seeds in here and I haven't seen any poppy, poppy seedlings come up, which is kind of a bummer because it was a really pretty poppy and I really wanted to grow. I've never grown it before. Um, I've just got um, other little seedlings. I'm pretty sure that's not a poppy. I think they might be zinnias. I might have chucked 
zinnia seeds in pretty much everywhere because <laughs> I like getting free plants. Um, so I'm not sure about that pot. I might just end up putting something different in it. I'm not sure yet. And then this one here is baby spinach. Um, so that's just super handy. They started doing a lot better when I finally mulched around them, but I don't like mulching um, my pots or the garden really um, in places um, until I see the seedlings come up. So unless it's a bit trickier in pots because you can't, it's not as easy to do rows. So with the, most of the pots, I just left it with the compost and planted the seeds. And then once the seedlings come up like this, then I'm able to mulch around them. Um, and then they retain their moisture a lot better. And this one in here is also calendula. I've got two types of calendula that I'm growing. Uh, one is, orange flash but this one is orange porcupine so we'll see how we go there's also like i'm pretty sure there are more zinnia seeds in here trying to grow and then i've got my strawberries so these ones were just bought ones um there's a couple a couple in there growing so this is a variety lawana which apparently is supposed to be um bred to do well in australia um so yeah we'll see how it goes Sometimes it feels like it's been a bit slow growing, but like that's doing all right. They're not super big ones so far of, of what I've seen. Um, the first year that I had them, I picked off all the fruit just to try and help it get a bit more established. Then behind my makeshift shade cover, I do have one poppy. There's also tomatoes trying to grow. So I have one poppy and this is a Californian poppy called Frilled Rose. And this may actually be the one that I grew in the garden last year. This one I started from a seed though. Can you see how tiny it is? Um, from my experience, which was only last year, they grow pretty slowly. So, um, so as this area is quite toasty, I put that extra it's just a window screen i put that over there to sort of uh cool it off a little bit in this area one thing that i'm trying this year which i've never done before is asparagus in a pot so asparagus is uh perennial so it keeps growing year after year after year um but it's best to have it so I've heard in like its own container because it grows from a crown and so it can spread. Um, and so I didn't really want to have a single spot in the rest of my garden beds. Um, I've always wanted to sort of have a separate garden bed just for the asparagus. And so I don't have a big garden bed uh, that I really want to keep asparagus just for asparagus in. So I thought, stuff it i'm just gonna try and put it in a pot and see how it goes um and this is a purple asparagus that i got from renaissance vegetables you can just pick them up from some of the nurseries we have here in toowoomba so i'm trying that one it does say that apparently with this variety you can pick it after two years because um asparagus needs time to mature generally before you start harvesting it so that the spears can get bigger so we'll just see, we'll see how that goes. It looks pretty healthy at the moment. So yeah, we'll just wait and see. This pot was empty. Um, I cleared out some kale I had in there um, from last winter. It was uh, covered in like caterpillars and stuff, but I kind of left it as a trap crop while I've got other brassicas and whatnot growing so that it would kind of just eat the kale I had in here instead of like the other ones, like I've got kale right next to it. This is Dazzling Blue Kale. And it's doing also a lot better since I put mulch on it. There's been a couple of buggies eating at it, but generally it looks pretty good. Mm, I think that there are, there's one little um, yellow egg from the cabbage butterfly. So I might need to try and cover this one up too. There's mint. My uh, little boy has been picking on the mint, which I totally don't mind about because look at it, it's doing amazing. So this is just, I don't know the varieties of it. There's another bit he's picked. This is just a variegated mint. I don't know the variety. 
um, and it came with a regular mint. So I popped them in here because mint can spread like crazy and so I didn't want it spreading through my main garden. Look at that. They were tiny little things when I got them. It spreads like crazy um, and can be hard to get rid of if you put it in a main bed. So I want it to have its own little spot and I just think it looks really cute, the variegated ones. So I had cut it right back um, when I first planted it and it's come back really great. The variegated mint I think has a more subtle flavour um, compared to your regular mint but I think it's pretty cool. And I've got some extra cuttings um, down here that I have that I can um, pass on to others. And then back over to my long trellis rows, I really wanted to have lots and lots and lots of snap peas. We really love sugar snap peas and I was quite happy to have an excess of them. Um, I know sweet peas are really like the flat, just the, just the flowering ones, the ones that don't have the fruit that you necessarily grow to eat. But I wanted to have more of the peas, but also have the pretty flowers. So I have actually planted um, another variety, which is this one, but it's hard to see. It has um, purple coloration and its flowers will actually be, its flowers will actually be um, a purpley, pinky, magenta kind of color, which is really awesome. So I've like interplanted along these rows. They are mostly the sugar snap pea, but then there's a couple of the um, blue shelling pea, which is what's called, all along here. I had a lot of issues with germination of the seeds. Well, not really germination, but something kept coming and eating the pea seeds that were in the ground. So you can see some of them are quite established and then some of them are really small and that's because I had to keep re-sowing them. But they're doing a lot better now, which is great. Um, and I just loved the idea of having a big green fresh screen along here because we've got the big fence behind there and we've got um, our dining room window there and another big window there so I thought it would be really nice to have some lush greenery along the fence here that we could see and it's the same down here the only issues I've had so far is we've had a bunch of caterpillars on a couple of the plants you can see down here um, that there's been a lot of leaves that have look quite lacy and that's because we've got caterpillars eating the leaves um, and so I've been going and squashing them it's pretty gross so there's a caterpillar on there um, otherwise you can like stomp on them it's pretty yucky and then you get green all over you see there's a few down there as well I'll have to come through um, and do another good squashing again one of the ways that you can tell that you do have caterpillars on your plants um, is the frass or like the droppings, like the poop. Um, see if I can find a good example. It's a bit tricky now that a lot of the leaves are getting eaten. So on this leaf, there's a bunch of little black things. That is the poop from the caterpillars. So sometimes you will see that before you see the damage or the caterpillars. So that gives you an idea that above that, there have been caterpillars. So yeah, I need to have a go through um, these plants again and squish the caterpillars. And they're all down here. I also have um, beans that kept growing. Oh my goodness, that's so tall. I'm not gonna be able to pull that down without wrecking the peas. The beans that were here previously just keep growing. I have to keep cutting them off, picking them back. Anyway, so that is the garden now for the start of April. I'm super excited um, about this season to just have a crack at all of these new vegetables that I've never tried to grow before to see what we can get. Super excited about the sugar snap peas. I really want to have just snacks that we have in the garden and then can also use for cooking and can also give them to friends and family and things like that. Hope you enjoyed today and I'll give you an update soon.